What makes up most of our garbage? Year of no garbage, recycling lies, plastic problems, and one woman's trashy journey to zero waste. I like this book. I picked it out because last year I chose not to throw away any garbage. That lasted two weeks because the piles began to accumulate. I had to adjust my commitment to one 30 gallon bag per month. And our family was able to maintain that without going crazy. So let's find out how Evo Schaub and her family of five abstain from garbage for one year. She composted, she donated, she recycled, she sold stuff. One exception she made was for health and safety, if somebody had a bloody bandage that they threw away. One child was away at college and she continued to participate in the experiment. Two children were in grade school and her husband has a home photography business. The first thing they did was remove the waste baskets. This encouraged awareness of what to do with an item. You couldn't just throw it away and forget about it. Could it be reused for something? Could it be recycled? This also made them more aware when they were buying items. When they would look at an item and they'd say, gee, do I really need this item or can I use something else? They needed to focus on reducing the amount of stuff that was coming into their home. They also tried to reduce the amount of plastic packaging. That is the stuff that builds up the most. So many stores want to sell in bulk and they'll put all the apples together in a bag so you can just grab and go. And the online shopping encourages so much packaging. They started shopping at specialty stores, but Evo Shop realizes that's not realistic for everyone because it's too expensive. Even with these changes, Eve still ended up with piles accumulating in a room and she needed to do online research and make a lot of phone calls in order to find out what was happening to these items, whether they were going to the recycling or whether they were going to the garbage. While doing research, she learned a lot about greenwashing and a lot about plastic because that's most of our garbage. The greenwashing is when corporations will use a word such as compostable and we think, oh wow, we can put it in our home compost. But in order to do that, it needs to say home compostable. If it says compostable, that means it needs to go to an actively managed industrial composting facility. Most people don't have access to one and those facilities reject a lot of items. So the company makes it look like they're being friendly to the environment when it's just garbage. So what happens to this plastic? So much of it gets thrown away. Okay, what happens to our garbage? She researched that as well. 88% of our garbage in the United States goes into landfills. In 2016, there was a report that stated all landfills leak. That's not reassuring. 12% of our garbage gets sent to incinerators. There's 70 incinerators in the United States. However, three fourths of them are more than 30 years old, which are exempt from the strict regulations of the Clean Air Act of 1990. So they are producing a lot of toxic ash and toxic gas, which we're breathing. And the toxic ash gets sent to the landfills or to the production of cement. Yet the United States companies are going to be building a plastic processing facility, the largest one in the world, down near Cancer Alley and New Orleans. Why? We can't get rid of it and it's toxic. The fossil fuel companies see EVs coming and they can't get rid of their petroleum. So if they can sell a bunch of products that are made from petroleum, they're going to continue to make their profits. The plastic emissions will negate any emission gains from EVs. Can we avoid plastic entirely? Not really in our society, but we sure can reduce it. And Evo Schaub mentions a lot of alternatives which we can use for different items such as toiletries, personal care items, uh, clothing, cleaning products, 
bidets, eco washers, etc. Before buying an item, we need to ask ourselves, will this item, or getting rid of it, damage me, my family, or the environment? If so, let's look for an alternative. We also need to push for legislation and enforcement for making these big companies responsible for what they make. If they're making a toxic item, they should be able to get rid of it in an environmentally correct way. If not, it should be illegal to make toxic items. Schaub says we need to reduce, reuse, and recycle in that order. I was really impressed with the meticulous research that Evo Schaub did for Year of No Garbage. And it's easy to understand, and the book is entertaining. She also wrote Year of No Sugar and Year of No Clutter. Thanks for watching, keep reading, and have a great week.